My Mguni names. I have lots of glosies, as we all do. We all have multiple glosies, multiple ancestors. In my language, li lodi or ema lodi, but I often use the term ama glosi. The space is so dominated, ngema zulu. There are a lot of Kosas, a lot of Swatis, a lot of Ndebeles in the space. Everybody that is encompassed in the Nguni tribe, but it is predominantly Zulu. It's not a thing of conforming. It just kind of happens naturally. Also because there are Zulus in my lineage. There are a lot of Zulus in my lineage. My grandfather, my mother's father was a Zulu man. So I tend to gravitate towards his language as well because he's also such a, uh, a, a dominant part of my spirituality and my paternal ancestors on my maternal side. My Nguni Lozis are all Zanemvula. I learned that during my process of initiation because there are processes during initiation where you learn what your Lozi names are um, and which Lozis work with you, which Lozis are your gift bearers, which Lozis are the ones that are here to work through you and the reason that you're initiating in the first place. Mautwasa, a lot of the time your main Mguni will come through and speak and communicate what their requirements, what they require for your initiation process, for them to be, to have full expression through you and to work through you um, without limitations. My Mguni, three of them um, have expressed, have come through, and all of them are Zanemvula, as is my first name, which is kind of a magical experience, I guess, um, learning about that and, and, and getting to know that part of myself because my birth name is Zanemvula. It's not something that I know of to be very common in the space. I've never come across it before where your your government name, like your birth name, is the same as your Lozi name. And usually our Lozi names, we usually go by our Nguni names, the, the Nguni ancestors that come through. So my Nguni ancestors, um, the main one, the main Nguni ancestor, and that is my Lozi name that I go by in the Lozi space. And that is, you know, that's how I identify as a healer. That is the name that I use because that is the main ancestor that works through Uzanim Vulans is Wangwe. The Mangunwa, the because it We cannot speak about the Nguni without speaking about Shaga, the king of the Zulus. Okay? We cannot speak about the Nguni, Singa Kulumi, all the all the clans. Our ancestors did actually come down from the west and the east of the continent. Before it was all divided, there were no barriers, there were no borders. We were free to just, or they were free to just roam and settle where they could. A space that our people could live in would be spaces with water, so it would be near rivers. It would be spaces with fertile soil that they could use to plant, spaces where there was food in abundance. That was just really just provided by nature. People would be able to hunt because our people were hunters. Our people were gatherers. They would be able to feed from nature, fed the mothers or our gogos at the time. Those are the people that did a lot of the gathering. The men would go hunting. And then the women would also tend and look after the homes. Then there was a whole lot of wars. Okay, there was especially the biggest one was the that one that is recorded is the Mfekane Wars, which was actually led by King Shaga. He conquered a lot of clans, for lack of a better word, in trying to, to gain dominance, basically. We cannot take away from the fact that he was actually trying to do good mm -hmm. in the best way that he knew. Mm -hmm. He was trying to build and put together a nation. And those now are known as the Zulu. 
Bantu Basemazumi. The people that he conquered, he actually put into, he absorbed them into his crop, okay, which is Gondosake, so they became his citizens. So he ruled over quite a number of people, but the ruling did not come without blood. It came with a lot of bloodshed. Uh, a lot of our ancestors uh, died in that time, so a lot of them died in battle uh, to actually make up what then became known as the Zulu Nation. Umgoni or Emangoni Nyalo is the people that actually came down and survived and lived through the Mkhetwane Wars under Shaga. Shaga Gebeanga Sivoyet, but he also had brothers. He had to fight. It was not all just Zulu. There was a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, different tribes, different clans. Mm -hmm. Emanguni would make up uh, their different dialects from the same Nguni language. Mm -hmm. We have Zulu, we have Siswat, we have Ndebele, mm -hmm. we have Kosa, we have Sislubi, we have Kudeban uh, Magandwandu, but Kulma Zunguni, Tsuabona Baya Yeza. But they speak the same language. So we have a lot of, of, of dialects coming from the Nguni language. Some of them are extinct and there's people who also just uphold their royal status and insist on using their languages. Mm -hmm. So amongst themselves they would actually speak it. I know the Mumalos and Dwandos or the Mkachas, the same clan, people from the same clan, they actually will still, yeyeza, they still will use that language. I'm actually, I can do it, I know, I know it. Having said that, mm -hmm. I do not want to exclude Basutu or Batswana or mm -hmm. because even as much as they are that and there is that grouping now we are still the same people because we all came from the same places mm -hmm. so we really are the same people mm -hmm. it's just a, a language situation and who then went where and who mm -hmm. settled where mm -hmm. and what languages were or, or what was promoted at the time mm -hmm. they will be of Nguni descent mm -hmm. they will have Nguni in their bloodline mm -hmm. We cannot speak about Bangoni without speaking about the amount of blood that was shed. And that is where we come to speak of the ancestors, the Babita and Bangoni. A lot of them lived through those wars. The Bangoni essentially display physical strength. They show up as, as very masculine. They show off uh, their physical strength. They rely on their physical strength because they are warriors. They, they are people who had to fight. And there was a lot of blood that was shed. And that is why you will find that we use red or there's a lot of red in, in the space. They'll be red and the there's blood that is going to be spilled on the day. And covenants are made around blood. Mm. But even the history that we actually do know of will speak of, of, of spiritual covenants being made through blood. Blood is the one thing that actually connects us. Blood speaks, okay? Mm. So your ancestors will locate you by blood. You do not necessarily have one Nguni ancestor that works through you. I have three that I know of. There could be more that are still going to come through. When you give yourself as a vessel, you live in a certain in a way that allows for spirit to actually be able to work through you. There's also a matter that we cannot name. Everything that we see in nature, all natural things are a matter. There's also a that are plants. And that is why we get healing from them. Mm -hmm. Because they have spirit. In the same way that we do animals have spirit. So that also makes them a matlot. So when we speak of nature, we speak of the four elements. Umgun is grounded in the earth element. What, what the earth represents for us is grounding and protection. Umguni is protective. Mm -hmm. That is actually how they come out. They come out like they, they come out ready for war. Because Umguni is very aggressive and Umguni is a warrior spirit, the Mguni trance is very consuming. It accesses a lot of the rage that you didn't even know you had. It gives you this like bravery and confidence that you didn't know you had. 
I do feel like I've become a lot more brave and a lot more confident since accessing Umguni. Trance is about, it's about light work and it's about giving expression to ancestors, to Imadlut. And they manifest in different ways because there's different types of Imadlut. Umguni, if we're now, when we're talking about trance, also there's different types of trance, the different loses manifest in different ways. Umdao is usually very light, like very quiet, you know, very soft spoken, very like uh, reserved. And Umguni is very loud, very loud, very expressive, very confident, and also aggressive, very aggressive. Uh, and that's because it's a warrior spirit. Umguni is very showy. Umguni wants to be seen. Umguni is very proud of who, who they are. They're proud yeah, of their they conquests. Do. They're even proud of the battles that they lost, that they actually lost their lives in battle. Umguni is not going to back away. Umguni is the one person that is going to actually confront you and say, bring it on. Mm. Yes. Mm. That, that is that spirit. And we all need that spirit in our lives. That's the spirit that actually spurs us on to conquer where we actually, or to confront things that we think we would not be able to, to handle ordinarily. That is the spirit that comes through and it pushes us. Mm. And it shows us who we really are and what we're actually made of. I never saw myself doing any of that stuff because I was just like when I would watch it in in my days where I was just documenting it I was like oh that's a lot <laughs> that is a lot and I don't see it for myself I don't see myself doing any of that stuff but then even before I, I went to Twaza like my Mguni would come out and my Mguni was very 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 aggressive very loud and um you know scary <laughs> so i i knew before i went to twasa i knew long before i went to twasa that i'm gonna have to do something to appease the spirit because the spirit wants to work the spirit has a lot to express and a lot to say and i've learned that a lot of my life has now become about accommodating the spirit because this is a this is a it's an entire personality and that's also another thing we need to understand about Ahmad Lozi is that they come with their personalities. And so it brings challenges in, um, we have a lot of challenges as Izangoma, challenges in relationships, challenges in social settings, um, challenges in the workspace, in you know whatever career it is that we're pursuing, especially if it involves, if it involves interacting with other people you have to constantly accommodate these personalities of the people that you've opened way for. Because when you initiate, when you, when you twasa, you open yourself up as a vessel for these spirits to express through you and to work. Because they have different types of work that it is that they're here to do. A lot of it is healing, and they heal in different ways. I was very afraid at first to document people while they were in trance, because some spirits don't like to be documented. They don't want it. They don't want it at all. And you have to be careful when documenting spirits in that space. And when someone is in trance, they are in spirit. I'm very skeptical of the term possession because when we speak about spirit possession, our minds immediately go to demon possession. So you know that whole fire, fire, that whole thing is is just it's about getting rid of demons exorcism is about getting rid of demons and exorcism is about getting rid of evil spirits and that's why we perform a lot of exorcisms even in our african spiritual space and that's what ufemba is about ufemba is about getting rid of evil spirits so possession isn't necessarily about demonic possession it's possession of spirits and there are so many different types of spirits and that's why I also spoke about it in the previous episode why it's so important for us to always light the way because we work we are light workers we work in light divination is a gift a gift that you get from your ancestors from all sorts of ancestors again uh, because we we are a people that want to categorize things to make them make sense we've done a lot of categorizing and we say uh, Mdawu does this and, and, and but that is only for our benefit spirit does not necessarily conform mm. we get messages okay mm. some of us are, are hearers some of us are seers uh, some of us receive a psychic some of us are mediums 
and Funu who talks to me this is good okay for all of those but I'm going to speak from my experience I can only speak from my experience mm. Mguni uses Ematambo, uses bones where we speak of bone divination Mguni is the ancestor that gives us this bag of bones which we used to divide mm. and in the bag you, the bag is made up of all sorts of things and there's shells there'll be money there's bones of different animals of goats lion there's things from plants in there as well which would be maybe seeds there's dominoes yes there's dice mm. it's a bag of tricks mm -hmm. okay that's only the owner is able to read we may even have the same bones but we will read them differently mm -hmm. yeah. so it's, it's it's about you and your losing that is why i say those other elements work together also the nimoya the moya or emaldoti also work together it doesn't matter how we categorize them so sithi umguni uyahlahla ukuhlaba uhlulwa ngamathambo lawo mathambo lo what makes those mathambo speak to you it is umoya you know so when we want so much to to explain things that we cannot explain we make a whole lot of mistakes the best thing to do in my opinion is to just work as you are led let that spirit work through you without you really wanting to break it down and explain it if ma 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 ushahluba okay in in a situation you now you are actually divining you really don't need to be stopping and thinking about it so i'm going to oh say says to you agilis oh say you just let spirit do the work that it's wanting to do in that time we have no business trying to define but we have every business trying to understand how it works and so that we are able to appreciate the tools okay so matambo is just part of tools that are used nalo moya is also a part of the seven disaw in the divination space in as much as i know you want to really be speaking about umguni i cannot speak about umguni in isolation okay but we do appreciate umguni and we say uh, we appreciate umguni we appreciate that earth element Uh, we appreciate the earth as well which actually give gives birth to or feeds the spirit of nguni which now we're speaking of our protectors we're speaking of we speak of blood we cannot speak of mangu without speaking about blood mm -hmm. we cannot speak about manguni without speaking about strength and mm -hmm. the show of strength and that is how they they give us healing that mm -hmm. protection and they come through when they actually come through they actually come through because there's a mission and the mission is normally really to protect the way that a lot of our gifts are revealed to us it happens in layers and it's really healthy for it to happen that way it's healthy for our gifts to be revealed to us in layers because we're able to process what it is that we're here to do we're able to process it in time because time is really important everything happens have everything has to happen in its time and that's why we have the term divine timing divine timing is is it's it's for us really it's not even for spirit because spirit knows spirit knows um all at once everything that is supposed to happen timing doesn't work the same way in the spirit realm that it works it doesn't work the same way in the spirit realm as it does in our realm so we have to be patient with spirit and that's that's what the process of initiation is about and the process of also just understanding our gift throughout our lives is about that it's about being patient with the process that's why there's a process and that's why we always say trust the process it's always about allowing spirit to reveal to us the things that need to be revealed to us in the time that they need to be revealed to us because there is a plan there's a divine plan for each person and just because you're not necessarily a sangoma or someone who has to go initiate or someone who is meant to initiate to 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 or to twasa or whatever to become a traditional healer it doesn't take away or invalidate your healing gift in any way everybody is here to heal in the way that it is that they're here to heal you just need to know what it is that your gift is and to nurture that gift because when you nurture your gift um and you nurture whatever it is that you're gifted with that it, that becomes a natural prayer and that becomes you honoring your ancestors you honor your ancestors by nurturing your natural your natural abilities and your natural talents and your gifts and that's how you honor your ancestors and so whether your gift is mathematics or it's 
um language some people are really gifted in just the way that they speak some people are public speakers some people are artists whatever art form it is that you're gifted in that is your calling and that is how you're called to heal and when you honor that that is how you appease your ancestors because that's what they were they gifted that's what they gifted you with and that's what it is that you're meant to do